Welcome, Whiskey Ball. I'm Daniel. Rex. So we have, I don't know if we can call it a benevolent thing. Oh. Oh. Because I don't want to encourage no. people sending non-whiskey things in. But this is also, yeah, yeah. here's why I'm torn, yeah, yeah. super generous. You can read this. Dear Daniel and Rex, we figured since we were coming into town for the Bastards Ball, we might as well bring you one of the local beers. Missing from your beers for Whiskey Lovers episode. Mm -hmm. Here are some old Rasputins to enjoy. Thanks for the content. Joy Caves and Brian Anderson. So, Thank you guys. we were missing old Rasputin because we couldn't find it anywhere. This is awesome, thank you. These, I can't drink beer, so these are for you. Yeah. I haven't even looked at these yet. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Look at that. Old barrel old, aged. Oh, barrel aged old Rasputin. Yeah. Interesting. And then this is the just normal. The this first is amazing. Time. Thank you. Okay. That's very super generous of you. And I would like to highly encourage people <laughs> to send you beer. Any, any well, <laughs> basically any and everything. Like fancy watches, um, cars. Still working on that yacht <laughs> <laughs> with jet skis. Can't forget the jet. Someone skis. did mail in a small toy boat. So that's the thing. Uh, this is one that I wanted to review. Again, what's funny for me is because I'm not a boat guy. Yeah, yeah. Like the moment somebody gets me a yacht, like what the f are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one donated by the Whiskey Marketing School because I wanted to review it. Wait, I've heard of this. Yeah, <laughs> it's this <laughs> random thing. It's no big deal. <laughs> it's just the only reason we started <laughs> yeah. to do this in the first place. Uh, magic cask? Compass box magic cask. Was this? The whiskey marketing school or you? Well, I mean, was I, it, was, it was the school paid for it, well, not it, me, not, not, not out of my money. you know, whiskey marketing school, thank you, whatever, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, they started doing their own maturation, Compass Box. Instead of just taking and bl immediately blending and doing, they started of course. rebarreling, yeah. moving, and then sitting no, on it's things. It's the next logical step for them right. to like marry and add their own element of aging. And, yeah. So they found a one-year-old malt spirit from a distillery that is near the town of Abelor. So Abelor. Yeah. Abelor is what they found. And they recasked it yeah. into Oloroso Sherry Butts. Okay. Right? Yeah. Then three years later, so they're four years old now, yeah, yeah, yeah. a specific cask was so good at four years old. Yeah. It was so good, they're like, I think we should use this in something. Yeah. So they took- Really quick. You know it's a blending house whenever there's a specific cast that's so good and they want to use it in something as opposed to just a single barrel release. Yeah. Almost all other distilleries. Yeah. They'd be like, okay, this is gorgeous. Single barrel release. Yeah. Send it to the festivals. Yeah. Let's win some awards. They're like, yeah. we should blend this with things. Yeah. That is a blending house that's to the bone. Yeah, that's commitment. Yeah. To the marrow of their bones, they're blending. So all of these barrels were sourced from uh, the bodega, um, Jose and Miguel Martin. Mm -hmm. um, they requested they were using American oak with moderate tannins. Anyway, so it's like, it's really soft, basically. Mm -hmm. So they got um, a parcel of first fill bourbon barrels from Imperial Distillery. Okay. And that became the majority of the whiskey, huh. with which they added this super young, from a distillery near the town of Avalor. It was Avalor, it was Avalor. They can't say it because like, yeah. contracts or some shit. It was Avalor, yeah. that's what they got. So this is Imperial, 92% Imperial whiskey. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Yeah, 8% not wrong. the other unique magic cask. Okay. So at 8%, yeah. a four-year-old malt. 8% four-year-old malt, the beautiful malt that should have been you got robbed. Robbed! You got robbed. Oh, uh, yeah. went right in, but bounced off something else that was in there. Now, do you remember when I, I, I dialed in your tactic here? I know, but I removed all the bottles. You did. Because I was cleaning. We had a bottle of James. Yeah, yeah. It was in the perfect spot. You aimed for the bottle of James. Yeah. And then you... Cleaning. I can't help myself. <laughs> you cleaned your way to failure. I did. Well, yeah. This is why I don't clean. <laughs> Because it inevitably leads to, to failure. failure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, hang on. I'm liking that. There's a springy, like a like a clear sprite soda. Yeah, sparkly. Sweetness. Yeah. But there's something else. It's oh, it's a like a that brings a citrus layer too. Yeah, I was going in the direction of a gin and tonic. Could be. Yeah. Like this herbal effervescent effervescent botanical, <laughs> and kind of citrusy. But then there yeah. is a spritz. Of perfume. 
A, of a fruity perfume. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of softens everything. It makes it, you know, it reminds me of walking through the stairwell when someone wearing a lot of perfume has gone up and I walk into the stairwell and I'm like, oh, it's dense in here. <laughs> it smells. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, someone has passed through here. Mm. Yeah. And it's starting to soften and get more musty. Oh, there's an orange layer too, some orange peel. This is unique. I, so here's what it's I at like. at the bottom of the glass. Is that Compass feel? Box, maybe they've always done this. I think there was an era where they really focused on a core range mm -hmm. and then periodically did special editions. Yeah. And now I feel like the market is flooded yeah. with relatively special edition stuff from, mm -hmm. from Compass Box. Yeah. The same way that a lot of single malt distilleries are releasing a bunch of no-age statement one-off things. They've embraced the let's create unique yeah. single releases idea and so well, I'm starting to experience blends from Compass Box that are unlike anything I've had historically. Yeah. This is one of them. And I'm, and I'm you know, if we're counting this just on the nose so far, I'm not disappointed. Okay, I, I, I need to get the canvas bottle because I have a theory. I want to drink it. Run! Aha! I was right! This is reminding me of canvas. Okay. Right, and it's sort of delicate, subtle. Right? No, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna show you something. You ready? Look at this. Lead whiskey makers, John Glazier, who's yeah. the founder, yeah, yeah. and James Saxon. Sure. Who's the whiskey blender on that one? Uh, blenders down there. James Saxon. Yes. Oh. I think we are finding James oh, Saxon's wait. palette. This one goes up here. Yeah, that goes back. Sorry, I didn't put that down. I think we're finding James Saxon's palette. Okay. I'm a fan. I'll yeah, it's very much delicate and nuanced but, and calm. But also there's density to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not paper thin. Okay. I just got rose all of a sudden. Very different from the bottom of the glass to the top of the glass. Yeah. Huh. Oh, honeysuckle. Yeah. yeah. That is really strong. A very, this may be the most honeysuckle. It's a very good note. Yeah. Also, Everything that the nose is setting me up for, yeah, perfectly in line with the flavor. Yeah, super honeysuckle and cut vegetation, like actual honeysuckle plant, mm -hmm. like not just the aroma of walking past a honeysuckle bush or vine, but it's got some weight to it, mm -hmm. like greenhouse density. You think this is forty six again? I think probably. This is forty six again. Yeah. Okay. Limited wow, dish. man, he Limited really has dish. a soft touch. I like it though. I like it. It's soft without being again. It's not paper thin. Yeah. It's there's delicate. There's nuance. There's delicate layers, but there is density in presence, which sounds like it doesn't. It's not compatible, but it is. You find these, yeah, these, these fluctuations, these layers, these, these yeah, intricacies I have between these flavors theory. playing with each other but they're very present, they're vibrant, it's nice. I have a theory I'm gonna pause it as a question. Mm. Not, but no conclusion, I have no conclusion. Yeah. I, uh, there's this pattern in music where a band that makes it, their albums inevitably change over time. Yeah. And it's not just because their creativity flows and ebbs and they change direction and they learn more. Mm -hmm. It, often you will see bands change because the type of venues they play changes. And so you'll find a band like Coldplay who yeah. writes these acoustic, really ballady, and then they get world famous and now they're playing stadiums. stadiums. And now they have to deliver songs that can work in a stadium. stadium. And every album since is stadium rock. Yeah. Right? And so you'll find that trajectory a lot. You two did it. Like all these bands and albums like Boy and War that were club albums, like yeah. hot, heavy, dense rock. And then they started playing stadiums and they changed into U2 stadium rock. Mm -hmm. Springsteen did it with yeah. the E Street Band. Uh, I wonder how much that pattern of changes mm -hmm. blenders products, where they, at one level gauging, you're playing to a certain room. They're gauging the reception. Yeah, and as you get bigger and more famous, you start to play to a different room. Hmm. I wonder if that's true. I, I'm not saying it is. I'm just wondering if it is. Even if that's not true. Yeah. That analysis of how bands cater to venues, mm -hmm. that's probably the most intelligent thing I've ever heard you say. 
I love that. Yeah. No, I I've, think that's absolutely true. I've been teaching that for two, de two decades hmm. when I used to teach independent music industry stuff, yeah. which was like, hey, you need to write music for where you want to play. Yeah. Not Dude, so if you want to play clubs, you need to write club music. I would love that to be true in whiskey, but then it's like, okay, what are the mechanics of yeah. somebody who isn't around the vast majority of people experience a thing? Yeah. And it, what do you hear from? Will you hear from like reviews of people giving star ratings in the comments right. whenever they're buying something online, uh, festivals, um, what else? Like people in like a tasting room or something. So yeah. it's not like a stadium where you just have this immediate, obvious flood of response. It's like yeah. little b drips and drabs of stuff that you'd have to try and piece together into, you know, well, this is the response for that release. Maybe a closer analogy would be authors, like fiction authors. Okay. So you write a book because yeah. it's, it was in you yeah, and it yeah. needed to see, and then the world grabbed it. And then you have to release one a year, <laughs> yeah. right? And so you start writing a caricature of yourself, mm -hmm. like Tom Clancy novels, yeah. where it's like eventually it's like, oh, look, another uh, uh, Clancy novel, mm -hmm. 837, it's this, or Louis L'Amour novel, 125, it's the same fucking story, yeah. right? Uh, and so it's like you start with this art and a... Hey, this stopped very abruptly. The, the, the hard drive ran out of space, but you missed about 45 seconds of us trying to sound like we were very smart, and then we're out. Bye.